Okay, first thing we're gonna do is, you know me also, I love my cream soup. So that's the base for this recipe. We're gonna use two cans, and I've talked about this before, how that you'll notice that my casseroles are very, very creamy. And they seem like they've got a lot of liquid when they start with. But by the time you put everything in there, uh, the end result is a really nice creamy casserole, not a dry casserole. So uh, if you start with a lot of creamy ingredients in the beginning and enough liquid, that's your end result, is a really wonderful kicked up casserole that's not dried out. We've all had that casserole that just could have been a little bit better. So two cans, and again, when I was growing up in those old church cookbooks, usually just used one can of cream of chicken soup. And this makes a nice big batch, a nine by 13, may even have some leftovers to pack for lunch. And it's gonna be, like I say, nice and creamy. Now we're gonna take that cream of chicken soup and jazz it up with some really great flavor so that it just doesn't taste like it's soup out of the can. One thing we're gonna add is a cup of sour cream, and that's gonna, again, make this really rich and creamy and wonderful. I'm gonna do some dried or fresh herbs. I've got some parsley and some thyme. And thyme is that, you normally, uh, you know, when you think of thyme, I just, it's a great, it just really goes well with uh, chicken. Some black pepper. Could do a little salt too. Don't need too much though, because that canned soup has got quite a bit of salt in it. Now this is another fun ingredient. You could certainly leave it out, but I really enjoy the flavor it adds. And again, it takes that canned soup to a whole nother level. I'm using some dry white wine. You don't need a lot, just a little bit will do you. And again, this is gonna, the alcohol will cook out of it. It's gonna be, you know, boiled out when it bakes, but it just leaves some really nice flavor. If you don't like cooking with wine or you don't have any, and we didn't use a whole lot in this recipe, uh, you could certainly uh, just use a little extra milk or chicken stock is a great substitute for wine. And we love our lamer's milk from the bottle, so glass bottle, we're gonna add some milk in here just to make it nice and creamy. So I'm gonna whisk that together till it's nice and smooth. So did you watch the game yesterday, Ann? Yep. It was a good one. A little bit more milk. I can just tell that it needs a little bit more. I like this winning streak. This is nice. It's a little nervous at the start of the season. Yeah, a lot less stressful. Exactly. Okay. Now, as far as the chicken goes, my secret way to bake chicken breasts. And I talk about this in both my cookbooks, my first one and my second one, because this is one of the questions I get asked the most. How do you make those chicken breasts? And what I normally do is Sunday is my big cooking day. And I will roast up 12 to 16 chicken breasts all at one time and then turn them into different recipes throughout the week. And I do it in a foil pouch. So I line up my chicken breasts on a large sheet of foil, I like to use the heavy duty foil, season the chicken breast with salt and pepper or you can use garlic salt and pepper. Um, it's up to you, I, I love garlic salt, it just gives that extra flavor. Seal up the pouch, bake it on a cookie sheet in the oven for, just depends on how many uh, chicken breasts you're doing, uh, but anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. And it's so much easier than actually just, uh, well, first of all, it's, they tend, uh, they tend to stay, stay nice and moist in that pouch, lots of flavor, rather than boiling them. And it's just easy, clean up as a breeze. Uh, and I like to shred the chicken or dice it when it's nice and warm. That's another one of my tips and tricks, is if it's warm, it just shreds up so much more easily. So we're using about three to four boneless, skinless chicken breasts in this recipe. And my family loves chicken pot pie actually one of Ireland's favorites. Who doesn't love it? It's all in there. That's why I love casseroles. I'm a huge fan of casseroles. And we're gonna dress this one up and make it look extra pretty. 
I call it chicken pot pie on the fly because we're not using a pie crust and you'll see how that all comes together. So just shredding up the chicken. And see how easily, just, you know, you've got nice clean hands. You don't need to worry about using a knife or anything like that. It's just gonna shred up perfectly. Great way to use leftover chicken too. Like I say, you know, if you're doing chicken, just do a few extra pieces and think about turning it into another meal later in the week. All right, so those are my chicken breasts. We'll save another one for another recipe later in the week. My hands, one more quick wash. Oh, I can smell it in the oven and it smells fantastic. All right, so our chicken's in here. Now at this point, we're gonna add some frozen vegetables, about two cups. This just happens to be a great mix of corn, beans, and carrots, just a bag frozen vegetables that we let thaw out. You don't need to cook them. They'll cook right in there. And I love potatoes in my chicken pot pie. That's probably one of my favorite things in chicken pot pie. And instead of having to peel and dice potatoes, what I do is I love to keep a bag of just frozen cube southern style potatoes. Throw those in there. And then you reseal the bag, put it back in the freezer, and you've got potatoes for another casserole down the road. Now, this is why I had plenty of liquid in here. And I may even need to add a little bit more uh, because we've got those potatoes and all that other stuff going on. And I just want this to be nice and creamy. So I'm just going to add just a, a pinch more milk. All right, looks fantastic. Nice big casserole dish that I'm going to spray with cooking spray. And you'll see, you're saying, okay, I get the, the chicken part. Where's the pot pie going to come in? Don't worry, we're getting there. So in this mixture goes, and then I take a tube of crescent rolls. I love using the seamless dough, but if you don't have the seamless dough, not a big deal. Just take the, you know, don't you don't make it into rolls. Lay it out flat in a rectangle. Take a pizza cutter, and you're going to make crisscross strips and form a lattice. And here we go. And it is absolutely gorgeous. And so that's your crust. Just the roll of crescent rolls that we used a pizza cutter with. Laid the strips on the top. Nice and bubbly and delicious chicken pot pie on the fly. Recipes on the website. You can also pick it up at any area festival foods. Coming up, some more fun tips and tricks. So stay with us. We'll be back.